The Mughals. The Mughals were descendants of two great lineages of rulers. From their mother's side, they were descendants of Chinggis Khan, and from their father's side, they were successors of Timur Lang. However, Mughals did not like to be called Mongols, as they were pride of their Trimurid ancestry, Babur. Babur inherited the small Central Asian kingdom of Fargana. at the young age of 11 years soon he was driven out by an uzbek tribe of the region his attempts for the conquest of samarkand had failed he soon conquered kabul in 1504 ce babur was fascinated with india's wealth when daulat khan lodi invited him to india he did not want to miss the opportunity of conquering india he then invaded india and defeated ibrahim lodi at the battle of panipat in 1526 ce after this babur occupied delhi and made agra his capital this battle marked the beginning of mughal empire babur defeated the combined forces of rana sanga of mewar and his allies at khanwa in 1527 later he conquered gwalior dholpur and other places He defeated the chief of Chanderi in 1528 and Afghan chiefs of Bengal and Bihar in 1529. In a short period of 4 years, Babur acquired territories from Indus to Bihar and from Himalayas to Gwalior. But before he could strengthen his hold over his conquest, he died in 1530. Though he was buried in Agra, His remains were later moved to Kabul as per his will. Babur was the most illustrious man of his age. He was educated in Persian and Arabic and wrote his autobiography Babur Nama in Turkish, his mother tongue. We learn about the Mughals from a number of books written during this period. We have Jahangir's biography Jahangir Nama written by his sister Gulbadan Begum. Many court historians like Abul Fazl, travelers like Frenchman Bernier and Christian missionaries like Father Rodolf have left behind very valuable accounts. Humayun, after the death of Babur, his son Humayun succeeded him and inherited a large empire. Humayun had a very turbulent life as a ruler. Initially, he struggled to maintain his kingdom as he fought with Sher Shah Suri of Bihar. and Bahadur Shah of Gujarat after he was defeated by Sher Shah at Chausa and Kannauj he became a king without kingdom wandering in Sindh Rajasthan and Persia looking for shelter and help he made preparations to recover the lost territories in India by making Kabul his base when he was at Amar Kot in Sindh his wife gave birth to their son Akbar in 1555 He reoccupied Delhi and re-established his empire in India. Unfortunately, he did not live long after this. He died in 1556 due to an accidental fall from the stairs of his library building in Purana Kila in Delhi. Sher Shah, the ruler in eastern India who defeated Humayun twice in the battles of Chausa and Kannauj, was Sher Shah. After defeating Humayun, He became the Sultan of Delhi. He was the son of an Afghan jagirdar from Jaunpur in Uttar Pradesh. His kingdom stretched from Jhelum to Brahmaputra and Himalayas to Narmada. In a short period of 5 years, Sher Shah improved the administration of his territories. He had a large standing army and continued the practice of branding horses. He respected the cultivators and ordered that his soldiers should not cause injury to standing crops when they marched babur and humayun failed to consolidate their powers as they both ruled an empire that was only held together by force of arms and lacked a consolidated civil administration but sher shah was an able administrator he established a monarchical system of government the kingdom was divided into provinces which were further divided into a number of sarkars they were further divided into parganas or districts 
which were then divided into villages. A village was the lowest unit of administration. The Parganas were under the Sheikhdar, who looked after the law and order, and Amil or Munshi was responsible for collection of revenue. He himself directly supervised the administration. He treated all equally and gave impartial justice. An efficient spy system kept him well informed of happenings in his empire. He was tolerant towards other religions. He built a number of roads. Prominent among them are the Grand Trunk Road connecting Lahore to Multan and Agra to Jodhpur. Land revenue was the major source of income for the king. Revenue was assessed on the basis of the fertility of land. The revenue to be paid was one-third of the produce and it could be given either in cash or kind. Sher Shah took several measures for the welfare of the people. He built many sarais, which were safe rest houses, where the merchants used to spend nights during their journeys from one place to another. This encouraged merchants to travel extensively, which in turn led to the growth of trade. Trade also got an impetus with the introduction of a new rupee coin called Rupiah. Sher Shah's history was written by Abbas Khan in 1579 CE, which gives many details of his administration. As per his account, if a theft or robbery was committed, the Mukaddam had to produce the culprits or point out their places of hiding. It was done as it was believed that without the knowledge of headman, nothing could happen in a village. It greatly helped in the trade and commerce. His brilliant career was cut short in 1545 CE when he died of a gunpowder explosion while laying siege to the fort of Kalinjir in Bundel 